What's up there everyone? Okay, I kind of regret that intro. Kinds of ruins the video already. Just kidding, I don't regret it at all. It wasn't random either. I was like, wow, all my introductions to these videos are so extremely formal and boring. Let's spice it up like I'm some kind of quirky gossip girl. Guess that didn't work out. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to show you something special today. First of all, sorry for showing you this dirty uh, container. This is one of the several containers I use to hatch pupa. I rarely show you behind the scenes my kind of rearing setups or the cages that I use or my hobby room. I've rarely filmed it on YouTube for one single reason. It's a disgusting mess. I have a problem. I think I'm literally one of those people who is like an animal hoarder and who has so many animals that it's really not not a nice sight you know it's not an orderly uh, clean and neat setup it's a disgusting mess but the good news is it works this setup works I mean I'm not complaining these moths are hatching perfectly check this out here's one of my giant Automeris moths that's hatching this is one of the biggest Automeris species in the world and all these pupa here see this all these pupa, I think there's like 100 pupa of this species in here. Here we have another pupa. All these pupa are of, the, of this Automeris. And um, first I thought it was Automeris lara. Then I thought it was Automeris postalbida. But I think it's actually Automeris nipelti. They were sent to me from Ecuador. But there's lots more. I mean, if we dig here in the soil, we will find more pupa. There's Lobo Bunea in here, there's uh, Pseudimbrasia in here, there's, oh my, here's another huge Automeris species. There's even several Automeris species in here, there's Tayas Juno in here. But the point of this video was not to show you this container at all, in fact I regret showing this to you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed for showing you a rearing container that's so overcrowded kind of weird and dirty but it's a perfect system it just looks weird but it's perfect uh, in fact the soil pupators I just burrow them here in the sand and for example these African moths that they burrow in the soil I just I just are Citheronias here for example here we have one from the soil this one remains underground and um, the hatching rate is really perfect, it's near 100% success. I have no cripple moths, it's not as overcrowded as it looks. But I'm rambling guys, I'm rambling. This is what I really wanted to show you. This is what I want to show you, it's one teaser. See this? This is really one of the most unusual Saturnidae that I have had in captivity for a while. They are the Recintus Hippodamia Norax. And it cost me a lot to set up a breeding program of these. They were from Costa Rica, imported legally. This is important. The stuff is really hard to get legally, guys. I mean, a lot of eggs travel from South America to Europe illegally. But these guys, they went through the official channels, permits and everything. And I think I should clean up this container and remove some of the old pupil shells that are empty. But there's also many live pupa. I mean, this, this thing probably contains 100 Automeris pupa. Um, maybe 10 or 20 um, individuals of Lobo Bunea, of Pseudimbrasias, of Citheronias. There's in these layers of sand, there are so many pupa I would not be able to count them. And it works perfectly. But I'm not telling you to look at this, I'm telling you to get excited because Something unusual is going to hatch from this, the Recintus Hippodamia Norax. So stay tuned please for these Recintus Hippodamia Norax because even though they are unbreedable in Europe and they only feed on Virola, which is the kind of host plant found in South America, it's still going to be awesome to see them, really. That's an understatement, it's going to be epic. So thanks for watching. Uh, now you've seen one of the several containers that I use to hatch my moths. I have like 10 containers like this. That's how crazy I am. That's how many I have. It's not even, not even counting 
my overwintering containers, which are in my basement and in my garden, that are also overwintering many hibernating moths. But uh, yeah, you get the point, right? Hope. I'm down now. I'm not gonna handle it. I'm not gonna disturb it. It's still inflating the wings. And um, the way this works is, you can see this moth is able to crawl up on the plastic because outer mirrors have very strong feet. But for some species, this surface is too slippery. They cannot climb up on this. And those species will climb up here on the towel. And uh, basically they are able to escape from the container and find a nice place to uh, inflate their wings. Well, since we're working, since we're at it anyways, let's check some of the stuff in here. More African pupa. Still all alive. More African pupa. I think this is also Lobo binea. I have many Lobo bineas. I like that moth. I bred a lot of them this year. So uh, yeah, it's like a giant chamber of surprises. Here more tails, you know. So, it's even small pupa in here. These are Hifantria cunea, the, the fall webworm. I've raised like a thousand of those this year. I'm not even kidding, guys. So, uh, yeah. This one's already hatched. May as well take those out. But I'm not gonna clean it up in this video. So, yeah. Here we have some smaller outer mirror species in here. As you can see, oh wait, this is not an, uh, an Altimiris, I think it was Nudarelia. Yeah, this must be the, the I think it's in fact uh, Nudarelia melanops. Very weird and unusual stuff. But uh, let's take this one inside, it's cold out there and I don't want my moths to freeze. Thanks for watching, this was probably the longest teaser trailer that I've ever made. <laughs> Guess I just felt the need to ramble. Thanks for watching people.